Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions. And in today's Two Minute Tuesday, I'm gonna show you guys three express tools in AutoCAD uh, that'll help you save time when you're drafting. Let's check it out. Okay, so since today's video is three tips, I probably won't make the two minute mark, but I never do. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna try for at the very least three minutes, three tips, one minute a piece. So let's get started. Uh, in this drawing here, I've got a basic stair detail um, at, in an architectural drawing. Not a big deal because the three tips I'm going to show you relate more along the lines of just kind of time-saving tricks. Uh, so along the top here, you're going to want to go to the Express Tools ribbon. And if you don't have that uh, or you don't have it set up, Google it. Uh, it's probably available. You can probably either turn it on uh, or add it. Uh, but it's available in most of the newer versions of AutoCAD. Uh, and it's super helpful. I recommend checking out some of these tools if you haven't already. But I'm going to show you three right now. Uh, that most people don't use that often and can save you some time. First up is auto numbering. Uh, and you can use this for numbering parts, uh, numbering fills. Uh, if you're into mechanical, different uh, part numbers you could use it for. All it's going to do is increase a number by one for each uh, text object. I'm going to show you an example of that right now with these three fill texts. So we're going to click the auto number command up here. And it's also, you can see down here, activated by T count. Uh, it's going to ask you to select your object. So I'm going to select these three text objects that are indicating uh, the object or the fill area that it's surrounding. So I've got one that says steel, one that says compacted fill, and one that says corrugated steel up top there. We're going to hit enter. It's going to ask you how to select your objects. You can choose uh, from X so X like left to right, or Y up to down or reverse, or you can choose the order you selected them. I selected them from top to bottom, so I'm just gonna go with that. Next, you can choose the starting number and then the increment. So as it is, it's gonna start with number one and go up one at a time. You could change this to 10 and increase it by 10, uh, 1000 and increase it by ones, so you get like a part number 1001, 1002. I'm just going to leave it at one and one. So the first one is going to be one, the last one three, since we had three. So I'm going to leave it at one, comma one, which you can change uh, for yours, but we're going to hit enter. And then it's going to ask you how you want to place your numbers in the text. So one way you could do this is just to put a random text item and have it overwrite as the option so it removes the text that's in there and it just places a number and that'll go with the second tip uh, as well that I'll show you guys so you can remember that one for the next trick you can use it as a prefix which is default and that means before the text and that's what I'm gonna use or you can use it as a suffix uh, placing the number at the end of the text this can be super useful for lists for numbering parts uh, areas locations like I mentioned uh, room numbers uh, super useful. Uh, or you can use a find and replace where it'll find and replace numbers or text. So I'm going to leave it as prefix because I'm going to number these uh, one through three and hit enter. So you can see now that they've all been numbered automatically by placing this number at the start of the text object. Super quick and easy way to number items in your drawing. Second in the three tricks is the enclose object command. This is going to put an object, whether it's a circle or a rectangle or whatever, around a text object. So I'm going to choose the second floor and first floor labels, and I want to put a circle around them. We're going to hit enter after I've selected them. You can choose the distance to offset, and that's how much further outside of the text it's going to place it. We're just going to leave it at the default of 0.3 right now, because uh, that should work with the scale of drawing. You can play with that, adjust it up and down. And then it's going to ask you what you'd like to use to enclose your text. You can choose circles, slots, or rectangles. 
Uh, we're going to use a rectangle right now. And then you can ask if it's going to be a constant or a variable size. Uh, we'll use variable and that way it'll change depending on the size or the length of the text. Uh, whereas constant would not, it would choose the one that fit and it would stay that way. So we're going to use variable and we're going to hit enter. And you can see we've got a line or a rectangle object here that's now placed around our text automatically and fit to that gap of 0.35 that we chose in the options. All right, two down. I think I'm doing okay for time. If not, I apologize, but thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Uh, I post new Two Minute Tuesdays every Tuesday, as well as other longer form tutorials and tech reviews in between. All right, so the last tip is going to be a tool that will help you uh, create break lines super quick. And I don't know if a lot of people don't know of this tool or they don't like it, but I don't see many people using this express tool. Uh, and I admit I don't really use it that often, but whenever you need to create a break line, which can be semi often depending on uh, the style of drafting you're doing, I've seen it a lot in architectural uh, as well as in details. Uh, simply clicking the break line symbol button up here under express tools. So it's going to ask you for the first point of the break line. Uh, you can also choose to change the block. Uh, I'm going to leave it as the default, which is breakline.dwg. You can change how far the extensions will go, uh, as well as the size of the actual break line symbol. Uh, I'm going to just up this so that we can see it really easy. I'll put it as a four. Let's try. Uh, and that may be too big or small and we can adjust later or create a new one. Uh, so it's going to ask for the first point of the break line. I'm going to put this right here and I'm going to drag it across. You're going to want to draw just a line to the end of your break line. And here's where the, uh, the automated part of it happens. You can choose the location for the break symbol or you can just hit enter for the midpoint of your line. Uh, I'll select right here in the middle and you can see that we've got a break line created for us automatically. Now, in this case, I would copy it down below, choose both of these as my trim fence. So trim and just get rid of everything there. And you've got a break line that's equal. Uh, it's drawn properly and it's really quick. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, one that I don't see used a lot, but it's super helpful, especially if you're working in style of drawing that uses break lines often. Um, but that's it for today's video. As I mentioned before, don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. Uh, leave a comment and let me know what you guys would like to see. Uh, and thanks for watching. I think I went way over on the two minute target here. Uh, sorry about that. Hopefully you guys will forgive me. Make sure you check out the next one and have a good one. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to check out my last video right here. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe up here to make sure you're up to date and you see all my new videos. Thanks again. Cheers.